Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. I know that most students like to skip word problems, so I'm going to try to give you some strategies to tackle them. What I've done is I've picked four of the most classic types of word problems that are not only almost always done in math classrooms, but are genuinely pretty applicable to the real world. Um, and for each one of them, I'm going to try to tell you how to solve it, how you would attack it, and also what other situations you might see it in. This first example is about joining a gym membership. The first one charges $300 to join plus $30 to month. It's called Pomp You Up. The second is called Strong and Slim. It charges $160 to join plus $50 per month. After how many months will they cost the same? Well, you can see the Pump You Up is expensive to join but then cheaper per month. So it makes sense that some people might say, oh, Pump You Up is actually cheaper per month as opposed to the other one. Well, for each one, I'm going to write an equation in y equals mx plus b form. Y will stand for cost. I could just as easily use c for cost. So the pump you up, p-u-u, -U, pump you up is 300 to join. I only play that once, but then I pay $30 every month. Contrast that with strong and slim, strong, slim, where it charges 160 to join plus $50 per month. There it is. There's two equations with two unknowns. This is totally set up for substitution, where I'm going to write each equation uh, equal to the other. And then if I solve for m, I'll get m is equal to 7, oops, 7, not 70 months, 7 months. And that's when they cost the same. If you want to join a gym for 7 months, it doesn't matter which one. If you want to join for longer than 7 months, then the one of them is less expensive than the other. Um, so that's something you really might see in the real world. I see this type of problem a lot also written about like uh, phone plans, cell phone plans, or car rentals. Um, sometimes something like this will happen with students going on a field trip and they have to fill up buses or vans. It would be a similar setup like this. Let's look at the next one. The next one is a mixture problem. Peanuts cost $2.50 per pound, raisins cost $1.25, the grocer wants to sell six pounds of a mix that was $2 per pound. Okay, so that's in between those two costs. How many pounds of each should go into the mix? This is the kind of thing you see not only with peanuts, but lots of times with grocery problem situations, like maybe they're mixing candies or they're mixing apples, something like that. Okay, the first thing I know is that there's going to be a six pound mix. My number of or pounds of peanuts plus pounds of raisins is going to be equal to six. Then you also know the price of each one. 2.50 for peanuts plus 1.25 for raisins, and that adds up to $2. This is where a lot of students make the mistake. This equation right here. My first equation represents amount only. Amount of peanuts, amount of raisins is six. The second equation I have set up as cost times amount. Cost times amount. So this one, I have the cost. I need to multiply it by the amount. I, it's critical that I multiply that by the six pounds total in my mix. And then from there, um, I can do substitution or elimination to solve. But again, this is the most common mistake right here. People make that equal to two. They forget that it's $2 per six pounds. Now, I personally would solve this equation using substitution. You don't have to. You surely could use elimination. Um, I'm going to let you guys try that on your own. You end up getting that... Um, peanuts should be 3.6 pounds, and R for raisins should be 2.4 pounds. I'll let you guys solve that one on your own. Okay, the next one, the chemist. This is a percent mixture problem. It's not always chemists, but it often is. It's not always alcohol, it often is. But this is something that you might actually see in your chemistry classes. Um, the first thing is they have 18% alcohol solution. I'm going to call that A. 21% alcohol solution, B, so B is clearly stronger than A. She needs to mix them to get 10 milliliters of 20%. This is actually really similar to the previous example that we just did. First thing I know is she has 0.18A, that's concentration times amount, plus 0.21B, concentration times amount, and it needs to equal 0.20, that's the concentration, and now I need the amount. 10, because my amount of the mix is 10. And then amount only, A plus B is equal to 10. It's very, very similar to the grocer problem we did in the previous problem, or the, the grocer situation we did in the previous example. So um, you look for similarities there. Once I solve, I end up getting A is equal to 3 and a third milliliter, B is equal to 6 and 2 thirds milliliters. But don't leave it like that, because I arbitrarily called them A and B. You want to make sure you're connecting it back to the original problem. The and a third milliliter of 
18%, and this one's of 21%. Don't just write it like A and B, because your reader doesn't necessarily know what A and B is, especially if I didn't write out the definition of my variables. Okay, this last one is the boat in current. I often see this with airplanes as well. A boat can travel 24 miles per hour, or 24 miles in three hours going with the current. Okay, I'm going to write that as um, boat plus current is equal to, instead of 24 miles in three hours, I'm going to call that eight miles per hour. On the way back, the boat minus current, because now his speed is contrasting against the current. Here they were adding together, both going in the same direction. Here they're going in opposite directions. And I want to figure out what my miles per hour is. For the first going downhill or with the current, it was 24 miles in three hours. Now it's 24 miles in six hours, so my miles per hour there is four. That's it. That's my system of equations. It's pretty set up. Add vertically so my seeds get eliminated, and I get the boat in still water is equal to six miles per hour. Okay, so these of course are not all the types of word problems. These are the most classic ones that the math teachers are going to are going to throw at you. So when you're doing your word problems, see if you can find one of these that's similar to what you're approaching. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it, work it. So if we had, no, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> That should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 